Those would be his tenants. Not sure. Okay, we'll open this meeting of Selectman uh, September 14th. Let the record show Selectman Jessamine is not present and Selectman Scanlon is on his way. All right. This meeting is about Winnipesaukee River Trail. <coughs> We've invited the Sullivans. They said that they would be here. I'm not sure if they're going to be here or not. So they would be. All right. So the reason why we asked you here, Rick, is that um, and Glenn, is that we are very unhappy uh, because we have some residents that are clearly very unhappy. Um, there have been changes in their lot. Uh, changes in their um, residence and the way that they live now because of the trail. And we've seen right from the get-go the Winnipesaukee River Trail Association going above and beyond with every one of the abutters that they've approached and have really gone out of their way to make those abutters um, satisfied, happy. In this particular one, it seems that we're not. We have a four-foot culvert in this uh, residence yard. They have grandchildren. I am certain nobody on the river trail would like that in their backyard because it only takes a small child to walk through that tunnel, and you know how kids are. They love tunnels, and the other side of that tunnel is river. And we're, we're very disappointed to hear that Quantum was not going to put a grade on it of any kind. And so we said, well, either <coughs> we take a really sharp look at what we're doing here in this last phase or we uh, do something really drastic, which I'm sure we don't want to do. The, these, these people had a buffer in, in trees in the back you can literally stand on the trail and look right through their bedroom, and you can look through their bathroom. I can't see anybody if somebody's standing there, but I can look through the bathroom. I can see the bathroom in their rental uh, building in the back. They've already lost a tenant because of it. You know, how much more do we want these people to lose? I mean, their whole back of the property is now exposed, completely, totally exposed, where it was you know, covered before. And we're just going to say, that's it. We're done. We're done with what we're going to do. I, I can't see that the river trail is going to live like that. I can't believe that they would accept that kind of an answer. So that's why we're here. With each of the other neighbors, as they came to hearings or looked at plans or notified of things, there was some communication. This one particular neighbor never really communicated with us directly. If they had, we certainly would have met with them like we did with all the others. So that the only communication that I ever really had from him was really all secondhand. Well, the communications that, that I know of that you folks reached out to the abutters on the trail, why didn't you reach out to them? We did in the same way as all the others. They all got letters from us asking them if they had any concerns. The, the letters were not ours. They were the ones that were sent out as part of the public notice. We never sent letters to abutters. Those were all done. But you did have a contact. Process. Right. <coughs> but those that you had to have specific right-of-ways, you did contact beyond the notices. After the letters went out through the engineering process, the ones where we needed to have a right-of-way, where we knew that we would need to negotiate an easement, we then did go as part of the process with Glenn to meet with them because we wanted to be involved. 
this particular one didn't have any indication from the engineers that TNEs were needed because they were looking at, and they always showed us plans that from the center line of the tracks to the edge of the railroad right away had everything that we needed to deal with to complete the project and that we didn't need to be on the neighbor's property. So he was certainly notified, but he never contacted us about anything he wanted to go over. And, I, and I'd say that'd be true of actually mm -hmm. all the people between that road and the river. Yeah. Um, so we reached out to the Glaudies and Joslins personally because I was asked to make that phone call. So I was never asked to make the phone call to the Sullivans. We reached out to the Sullivans with the Conservation Commission and they came and talked with us about what their expectations were on the, <coughs> on the conservation portion of it, but we never talked about the Winnipesaukee because we assumed you folks did. And you're telling me that you never did. So how can we make going forward, how can we make this work for them? That we have to do something for them. The thing that I think would be helpful is to look at what the railroad had on it when construction started and what was actually done at the request of the engineers by the construction company to be able to make it possible to put the trail in. Those were all within the plans. It was approved by everybody. What bearing will that have on it, the existing well, condition, regardless of whether well, it was, if there was no shrubbery on the Sullivan property and it was all on the railroad, what difference could that possibly make? The fact is, the denuding of the state property well, I think that helps has caused a point. privacy issue with the Sullivan property. Even if there wasn't yep. anything on the Sullivan property, I mean, we've, we've denuded it. In terms of, we got before and after pictures and today's pictures that show us a possible solution. Okay. So I think I'm good for possible solutions. So this is the before picture. Standing um, just about, I believe, where the trail now crosses the, the culvert. So these trees here were actually on the Uranus property, and of course they're no longer there. We're looking um, east. That is correct. We're looking east. The railroad is on the other side of these bushes. This is the point where it died. Uh, the, the Sullivan property is, is, is the green area here. Uh, this tree, we're going to see a lot. That's still there. And you'll notice this marker um, right, right there. So that's a before picture. And what's okay. the date on that, Glenn? Uh, November of 2012. And, then, and here is the ditch. The, the ditch that got, got cleared out. Um, Here is something taken from a similar spot. I won't say it's exact as it as it sits today. So as you can see, uh, as you say, the brush, the, the, the railroad brush that provided privacy for the Sullivans is no longer there. Um, when we were out there the other day, we uh, actually Lightman was the one who physically carried the uh, the tape measure and measured from from the track. And this post right here is on the property line. Um, just to give you some, <coughs> some perspective. I just go through these. How is the back slope of the railroad bed going to stay stabilized with that steep a slope? Right here? Yeah. Um, that has been seeded. And actually, uh, the grass is actually coming in really well there. I was out there this morning. Well, if you've got a four-foot culvert to handle water, the grass isn't going to hold that uh, bank there. Um, the velocity of the water if you're filling a four-foot culvert. We'll have a different picture. I think I'll show you the might okay. some of Well, when, when I hear four-foot culvert, that's... It's a big culvert. It is. It is a big culvert. That's correct. Um, and there's <laughs> Just now I guess what happens is it'll uh, hit uh, Sullivan's and all the butters on that side because it's lower. Ooh. 
I hope that trench is substantial. Um, Not for the college. He's a nine, probably just not in any particular order. Here's what you see of the Sullivan's driveway um, on, a, on a before picture. And right there you can see actually some surveyors take marking the boundary. Here's a picture I was getting to. So they're here we're standing in the ditch line looking down toward the Sullivan's. Um, and you're right, it's the trail that is much higher on the Sullivan side than over here, but no change in grade has happened over here. This is exactly the way it's always been. Um, the grass is coming in, sadly. You can see all the point out. So there's a Japanese knotweed. You can see it's already started to approach up here. And I think that's going to keep Steve and Rick, probably Rick and his crew busy as they will be maintaining this around. But the vegetation to hold to hold this in place is um, you know is already taking place. Um, and then here's the outlet end. As you and you really can't see it here, but I think what stopped this. Um, this, this hay from coming in is a this rocks just on the other side that you can't see because the hay is blocking it. Um, you know that's there, kind of. It's the only protection right now on, on the like pipe. A, like a little check dam. Like yeah. a little check dam. That's correct. Did anybody take a picture after last night's torrent? That's oh, this was this morning. morning. Oh, that's this morning. this morning. That's right. Yeah. Um, and so. That's Feel free to step in because I think that's just about all I have to say about the. If you go back to your culverts. Over there? That's fine. You have a uh, young child. That's not a nuisance, you know, inviting them to go explore. I think it's a horrible safety issue. And depending on <coughs> the time of year, spring, when the river's running fast and cold. All they have to do is trip out the out outlet side under the water, and we'll be fishing them out at the dam. Well, <laughs> on the second point first, here's where it comes out. Because um, I know it's been said in some of the things that there, you came out of the culvert, mm -hmm. and it dropped off into the river. As you can see, it's, it's specifically designed not to do that. Well, what, ha runoff? what happens when Silver Lake is in no wake zone, and we're up to... I forget what elevation, so that the water is just rushing through town. When it's hitting the buildings down uh, the old uh, St. Bonnie Press and those buildings, it's hitting the part that is over the river. That's going to be flooded. Uh, the spring runoff, the water is it's high. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's going to be high. Um, Who, who's liable for the uh, death of the child? Well, so far nobody's died. I understand. I, but the only thing I can say to that, and I'll say as a parent of young children, I'm a five-year-old, um, I would not want to see him in this culvert or in the four-foot culvert on the other end of the same property. Um, there, are, there are children are attracted to things like this. Uh, this is not the only four-foot culvert you know, in town, and, but right now it's being treated the same as the others. Um, so, so we're doing the wrong thing on the other, so we'll continue to do the wrong thing? I don't uh, think the others started a backyard where we know there are young children and where there has never been a full frick culvert. Uh, just, just to be clear on that, it's not in his backyard. It is on railroad property. You're within oh, two granted, feet it's of his yard. So granted, it's, it's very close <laughs> oh to my God. You're within <laughs> inches. I don't deny it, but I'm just... You're within I inches. Want, I don't You're in his backyard. So on under his property and plopped a culvert down in the middle right. of the yard. Right. You're, you're so not on his property, but you exactly. are in his backyard. So the question is, what are we going to do for Mr. Sullivan for his privacy issues? When we were out there the other day. We started to look at both the culvert and the privacy issue. And I think part of the solution lies in some fencing. So the question is, what type and how much? Fencing isn't going to resolve the four-foot culvert. Well, if the fence encloses the 
uh, essentially continuing the existing fence. So that, that it corner. keeps the yard on that side of the fence. How far right. are you going to run that fence to where you think that no child can get on the other side of it? Having had two children myself who have survived to be adults and now they're grandchildren, I know that any self-respecting five-year-old can climb any fence you put in front of them. So <laughs> you can't. Yeah. Which, which is why we've got the concerns with the culvert. Why, why can't we take rebar, do like a six by six pattern, set it against the edge, that way they can't squeeze through it? After storms, if you're, if you're maintaining for knotweed, you can maintain for the brush that accumulates next to it. Because the other thing is you can always have beavers will come in and dam it. So would you extend that wooden fence down to the corner and then up the, the length of his property? I don't know how far would that, be reasonable to go. That's part of what you wanted to discuss. I mean, the, short of taking that four foot culvert out and maybe replacing it with a two foot shotgun culvert or something, it's, it's over, I mean, the plan has always called for that culvert. That, that's fine, but you can put some sort of grate in the front to protect so, people from there, getting into it. Same, same with beavers. Yeah, there is the problem that the engineers told us the other day, which is they designed it and they don't recommend, nor would they support putting a grate on it, whatever a grate so, is. So what they're telling us then is <laughs> under a hundred year storm that culvert's going to be full of water. We I have can't two imagine culverts. that because Sullivan's going to lose his whole yard. We have two culverts in Lockmere. Both of them are bigger than four foot in my lifetime. I can't count how many times those culverts have been clogged by brush coming down the river, uh, debris, whatever. And, and they get, they flooded the top of Route 3 and Brook Road. I have a picture over there of Brook, Brook Road flooded right now. So regardless of what yeah. we, whether you put something there or not, I there's going to be maintenance. Some of the other folks in the trail committee. And we could see a scenario if we can get the state and the engineer to agree to it where if there was some rebar over that that we would have to clear brush out that it gets banked up against it but I don't know if there's any way we can get the state or the engineers to agree to that they seem to be pretty adamant the other day that they wouldn't agree to that and when the projects over when, when this is built, I, my understanding home. is, yes, and the state has gone home, we have the option of doing whatever we want. Yes. So let's discuss that option. Since I was at that meeting, and yes, they're very adamant. They don't want, so that would be quite the frankly, they don't want the headache of that a change would be the order. To put a thing like you said, then we the need to come to an agreement now to make the board comfortable that this is going to happen. Well, this is where I will back out mm -hmm. because once construction is finished, town of Northfield is, you know, we're, we're managing in the construction period. What is agreed on for post construction is between the two of you. Just a quick question. So there's going to be a fence to the right of the trail. In, no, in no, there's going to be a fence to the left of the trail, protecting the trail from the railroad. Mm -hmm. And then there's supposed to be another fence right to the right of the trail. Partial so fence. There's going to be a four-foot chain link fence along right. this line right here. No. Yes. no. Not right there. Between the trail and the ditch. There's no fence between the trail and the ditch. Yes, so there there be is. Yes. It, 40 there's feet. only a small, short a section only because of the incline. That's what they said Monday, anyway. Yes. Yeah, it's showing right That's here. what Lisa told us. Go through. It doesn't go. It's it goes to maybe the about that last of these four trees. Right. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't point. go far. Oh, that yeah. that little piece. Yeah. In right. case somebody stumbles, they won't fall into the ditch. Okay. okay so and here's then, here's then another then here's another idea. I didn't know that that already had a fence. I missed that detail. Could we try to get that fence? If it's already going along the top, to curve back down around and come across the ditch, away from the entrance to the culvert, and then back down the property line and meet the other fence. I, what, are you running the fence in the ditch line? Yeah. That's going to create more of a hazard than my six by six pattern oh. I'm proposing. Well, what? except it's away from the edge oh. of the culvert. Excuse me. 
But it's where, wherever it blocks it, you're going to create a dam problem, and you're going to get erosion issues. You're going to. That's going to be a heck of a thing to clean out. Okay. That's that's going to be, be quite a bit worse. Just thinking about the kids. Well, no. What I'm saying is, that, so you're going to have a, a fence there, and then if we're talking about a fence on the Sullivan's property, you're going to have at least part of that protected on either side from a fence. So somebody further up the trail would have to get off the trail, go walking in the ditch in between two fences, and go through the... It would make more sense to me to put a grade in that opening. You know, it wouldn't have to go all the way to the bottom. That You could leave, you know, a space on the bottom so most debris so would get through. The larger debris you'd have to clear out. How we how we attempt to do that. And if you bolted it in there. If it's after the project is complete, it's between the Winnipesaukee River Authority, the town, and the railroad. Well, no, no because, well, part, yeah, because that's in there right away. Yeah. It's in there right away. So I don't think uh, the, that's not the right Winnipesaukee River anymore. Authority wouldn't have any problem with that's the That's not in their right of way anymore. The culvert is. In fact, their bridge goes Right. That their, way. Their property right there, that post, that's that 38 feet from the track. So that, that co entire culvert is within the railroad right of way. Has anybody replaced our survey boundary marker? Not yet, Not yet but that's in the works. That we the just managed to get this map over to Quantum today. I think you're going to find that that's, wow. I mean, if you move the grate into the pipe about a foot, You'd be out of their right of way. Yeah, that that pipe is is on the railroad property, so so would, which makes things easier in a way because we're dealing with just. It doesn't you know, end on railroad property. It ends in the river. I mean. It ends on town property. Oh right, right. That's right. Well. Um, this the entire structure is in the railroad's right of way. How wide is the right of way? It is. Thirty-eight feet from the center line of the track. Which is actually why the railroad insists that we put it on this side of the track. Well, regardless. Yeah, I mean, that's... 38 feet from the center of the track? Is there a right-of-way? Amazing, isn't it? I've never been concerned with the right-of-way. I've never had to. Well, we had trains. Oh, it was only 20 feet. According to this plan, if they constructed it according to plan, that culvert is on the other side of the, uh, the iron pipe that was found. So, regardless of that, and it's on the you other have to side take back whatever we bring, come to track. here to your board, right? No, I can make a decision. It'll save time. How nice. So, if we can figure out a way that's acceptable to the town and the railroad, <clears throat> we can certainly put a grade on it. So, I think the issue is going to be the railroad. I don't have any idea what they would say about a grade? The only place I know of where we have drainage, any place else on the trail, there's a pipe on the end way down near the end of Route 140 where it goes under Interstate 93 where there's a culvert that was put in. It goes under the trail. That one's got a surface grate that's always clogged and we have to clean it out four or five times a year. It's every big storm after the leaves fall it's clogged with leaves and sticks. What's your grate opening on that? That's a regular, you know, like sewer grate, storm grate. Well, see, that's why I'm talking like a six by six yeah, pattern. That, it, that one's not. That one's horizontal. Yeah. This one would be vertical, so be less, much less. Well, I would do a grid, a square checkerboard pattern on that, but any leaves and stuff are going to flow through. It's just your branches. They don't okay. do welding at the high school, do they? Huh? They, do they do? Not welding? anymore. They do in Laconia at the well, high school. Hewitt, Hewitt might. Don't we have a welder at the highway? For the sound. I have it in my garage. They suggest um, they don't think you're going to do anything that will keep a determined child out of this. 
you know, having but not doing anything well, is no no that's not where I'm going with this that's not where I'm going with um, you know they'll come in the other side I mean I've been in my share of under bridges and, and such mm. but if what you're trying to do is just prevent the utterly curious you could probably put something just right across the top I mean, they would still, to get in, they'd have to crawl on their bellies through the dirt to, to do that, which so might be enough a, of a grade terror. across the top? Well, on the top half. Yeah. You know, you'd have to go low enough so they can't well, get in. It's too dangerous. It's it's still the attractive nuisance unless you... I think if you go six by six or eight by eight yeah. squares of rebar, you're talking, you know, you're talking good-sized squares. But leaves and debris are going to go through. Beavers are going to go through. All the kind of. But you don't know. I don't. Hopefully the beavers won't, because they'll they'll get smart and they'll try to damage. My Karen could go through. Well, three of them. Okay. What is the building code for spacing of balusters on decks? That's specifically to prevent children like from going a, through. Well, it's for the kid's head. Yeah, to keep them not from the whole body getting through. So, I mean, if we went with that size. Now you're down to what? Now you're down to four, four inches. Is it four inches? Say. I think it's four inches. Somewhere close. It's yeah, close. plus or minus four. So, so the good news would be, with all the stuff cleared out, there's probably not a lot of big branches here. Unless, right. Unless these end up down there. Um, I would just ask, as far as the liability, if branches do get, we put in the grade, branches get stuck here, and suddenly the yard is flooded, is it, who would that be on? on the town and the trail. If you if you left that the way it is right now, and tomorrow we had a storm like we did last night, and then another night, I, I could I could picture that that front where the, the logs are are in, and he has his grill is all going to be flooded because it's going to be washing down all that hay from the rest of the mounds that didn't come down before. Yesterday, did he get a lot of flooding in the past? When it looked like that, he didn't. He said he he mentioned no flooding. So I guess that's a good sign. <laughs> no, which is why I wonder a four foot culvert. But I think if um, the trail's willing to look at the possibility of putting uh, something on uh, on an idea of rebar or gate some type of a cover to that and doing something for privacy so on the privacy side it's dependent how much and what but the first part I think would be bring the fence down to the property line corner from the line what goes towards the Ernie's property. Then take the right angle and bring it just to the outside of those two trees we can see. But the question is how far do we continue? It becomes a, a matter of privacy for the house, for the small house in the back would be accomplished by probably three sections of fence. Except people walking on the trail will be readily able to look over the top of any fence you put there unless it's 12 feet high. So Rushed now we're it. talking about vegetative growth that's going to grow high enough. You can stand right there <coughs> on the corner here. Stand there and, uh, and look right into the, the window. I was there this morning. That ditch is higher than I am tall. So you're, you're actually looking down into the house. Which to me would be, I wouldn't want to rent there. We have to come up with some type of solution that's going is to be he, benef beneficial. Is he willing or open to having vegetation planted on his property? Well, I think that that would be a possibility. And I know at our house we have just a line of arbor beaters between us and the street. So do a very good job of shielding.
certainly something else we could do is plant bushes. If you if you're planting them down low, though, it's going to take. They're not a fast growing species. Well, for that, he's got the Japanese knotweed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Japanese knotweeds already got shoots coming sure, up yeah. out of the drainage dish. Sure. So less than four inches. Before, that's six yeah. feet high. Is it less than four inches? Less than four inches. Yeah, I thought it was because my railing is, yeah. uh, if I change it to wooden, it has to be less than four inches. And the, and the height underneath it has to be a certain, I think it's less than six inches going from the yeah. deck up. Yeah, the test is a four inch diameter ball. can't pass between them. Uh, really none of our business because we'll be out of there after construction but I was just going with the bushes on his property for a couple of reasons and one of which they'll be on his property it's like I mean because right now his neighbor has decided to do something different with their property which has left him with a problem um, and if he owns the screen the railroad his neighbor being the railroad but yeah, the railroad had grown up, and now the railroad has decided to do something else with it, which we're all grateful. But uh, if he owns the bushes and the bushes are on his property, that gives him a lot more control in the feet moving forward of the screen. Hmm. Nobody can mess with it. That's right. Without his permission. That's right. Which is something he's never had to this point. Is there elevations on that print? Yeah. What is right. the elevation to the... Uh, from the trail down to the um, drainage ditch. That one. Well, I would say the center of the ditch is at 456. And the next topo at the top of the trail, or the, on top of the uh, culvert, is 458. That's not enough. <coughs> what? That's way more than two feet. <laughs> two feet from. That's got to be at least uh, six feet. Well, it, it, uh, can we look from at the, the culvert? From the ditch up. The culvert's four feet. Right. There's how much dirt on top of it? Oh, at least two. Well, now here on the top, at the edge of the trail, that looks like a six, four sixty. Goes so it's going to be at least six feet. Oh yes. When I was in that ditch, I had to read. I was had to look up at Rick's shoes. <laughs> he was on the trail. I was in the ditch as well. So it got six feet. Yeah. So it's got to be at least that. Yeah, four sixty. And then what? And then the next total is four fifty-eight, which is the top of the ditch. And then in the ditch is four fifty-six. So that's six feet. If you take the top of the trail and add, let's say, six feet, which would be cover the tallest person, basically, their line of sight, and the top of the window, you're going to have to have your bushes. 12 feet high? That line. No, not necessarily 12 feet, because you're looking down at that window. Okay? Because if you had somebody standing here, and it's, let's say, this tall, Okay, and they're looking down, and these windows are this tall, so it's that angle. So this would have to block, be tall enough here to block it, not necessarily <coughs> higher Probably than this. Probably even 10 feet, 8 feet, 10 feet. It, the, because the, it, the topo goes down where it's open there, it's actually the, the, the ditch is lower. But then it goes back up a little bit, and his house isn't real high, it's low. So as long as it blocked that line of sight. So where all the knotweed is there right now, put it in, you mean? Well, where's the house? Is that the brown thing that's right there? That's the, uh, right uh, there, the light, kind of the beige. Is that, that it? That's the, that the apartment. The, house? Yeah. the rental out back. That's the rental out back. And those white things look like the windows? Yes. Or it goes those up a the little windows. bit. But if you block that, you know, figure out how tall it is. And, just to block the windows. Put, to block the windows and just put arborvitaes in that section and then maybe fence in the other, whether it be four foot chain link or... So um, they have the privacy. So they have the privacy in the yard, but 
that gives them the extra just to block the window section. Just a thought. And like you said, have it on their land so, so nobody the, could ever mess with it. Bunch of green that you can see beyond the trees is the Japanese knotweed. Right. And that must have been cut down. It yeah. was. It was. It cut was right cut down. down. To the ground. It's grown back. That when I was there, it was all cut down. So that is two weeks ago. Yeah, right. it well, there was still a little bit <laughs> of a shrub, but yeah, there was yeah. still a little bit on his property. Yeah. Looks like it's got taller, but there was a little bit there. So, one part of that solution then would be shrubbery that would grow to be five, six feet tall, right down a little bit. In, in between those two trees? In between those two trees and then as far as the edge of the house, at least. I think that tree, uh, the last tree before the, the one that you see ver real clear. No, go down further, the other way. This one? No, go down two more, right there. That tree right there is beyond the end of the house. Yeah, it is. It's, it's actually over where his driveway is. What's, you well, you must have a lot size uh, on the house, a uh, sketch of it, so you can know the length from the tax card. I didn't bring my, com oh, right there. I didn't bring my computer. Do you know his lot size? Uh, the, not the lot size, but the uh, house size, yeah, that's the, the structure. Correct. That structure out back? Yeah. Well, what are you looking he, for? Well, I was thinking that length would be the length of yeah. the shrubberies. And then the rest would just be to deter somebody from going through children or something. Yeah. Keep in mind, though, that shrub is going to be fighting mountain. He doesn't put it, treat it. Forsythia grows into an, I had an impressive yeah. I'm about mass of stuff. <laughs> That's what I have between uh, <coughs> Just watch out for the bald face hornets. <laughs> what number Main Street is it? Well, Ernie's is 180. The East Main. So you'd be 182. Oh, I forget we got this. <coughs> oh, there. Was that it? That one. Yeah. So the, the tree that we were talking about is that one. It's on the far side of that's his driveway. That's pretty far down. East side of his driveway. Yeah, that's way on the other end of his property. Right. right. Can you see a picture of the back of his house? I think there was one there. Uh, that there. So that's probably one of the windows that he's seeking privacy for. Yeah. So we would have to start with bushes just beyond this tree, continuing down along where the knotweed is. Well, I would suggest we just ask if the knotweed, if we just agreed not to cut the knotweed. That stuff comes up early and it stays up all year. Except for the winter, well, uh, I don't know what the winter you snow, um, the trail cross country is skiers. The but the the snowmobiles track. use the railroad tracks, which they yeah. always have. Yeah. Oh, so you can cross country ski your snowshoe on it? Oh, you <coughs> can. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know if you physically closed it. It's no. like we closed the park, but it's still open. We just closed the bathrooms. Close it to the extent that a snowmobile. So you don't maintain it in the winter. Yeah. That's what you're saying. I cross country ski on it too. Yeah, I snowshoe. It's actually really nice. So if so, you're saying uh, the possibility is laying in that we grow on the side of the swill. Oh no, they work. You don't want the knotweed to grow. You want the knotweed to go. It's too invasive. I think it's already starting to grow into the drainage ditch. Even though they oh just yeah, cut they'll it. be there. You can't if get rid of it unless you poison it. Right, but we can't do anything about it on their land. No. I'm saying that planting bushes should be conditional on getting rid of the knotweed. So, what kind of agreement can we come to? A written agreement. 
free to plant bushes and work with the town and the railroad to try to get approval to put up a, a grate. Joyce, can you type up something for Thursday? Get it to Rick for approval? Fortunately, I'm not going to be here Thursday or Friday. We can email it to you, just and you can just email back and say, let's work for you, wording. So, we're gonna, so bottom line is we're going to try to find some type of grate, make a grate, whatever, to put on there, but we're going to get permission, we have to get permission from the railroad? I would believe so, since it is on there right away. Okay. We have to get permission to the, put the that other, particular design on yeah. the property. The other... There were two other places I've been thinking about in the phases of the project where there were grates. And there are two other places where we have grates. On phase two, on the part of the trail where the property next to it, between the trail and the river, is, is owned by the Jocelyns. There is a drainage culvert that's got a grate on the side. And it's vertical. It has little slits between the Part, but it's only about that high. There's also one on the first phase of the trail in the front that's on a culvert that goes underneath the trail that was put in, I don't know when by who, it was there before we built the trail. It was when it was all railroad. And that one we're cleaning out every twice the summer and every spring and every fall. And then well, you guys know you helped clean it up once yeah, on phase two, yeah. where there are no grates, but it's a, what is it, an 18-inch culvert. And because the rain and the snow and everything comes down off the back of AutoServe, and it brings down. Right. Well, down so AutoServe keeps adding on with well, more so impervious runoff. area. And then the ditches have not been maintained by the railroad, so they just completely were clogged up with sticks. Because it floods their rail, their yep. rail bed. So they have water running in between the tiles. Yeah. So whenever we're out there, we so, clean those out. So as far as you're concerned, though, it, if the uh, railroad says yes, then that's what the trail's going to do for us, for the Sullivans. And then we're going to try to look at some type of bushes or privacy, and if that's not acceptable, we'll, we're going to talk to them, see if that's acceptable to them, or what are we going to do? Well, yeah, we if, should. With the grade, we would need fencing. No, no privacy. I'm talking about just the privacy for the, the other portion of it. So there's, yeah, some sort of buffer, green buffer. What kind of bushes grow really fast? And and we wouldn't own them or maintain them. No, they'd, they would be be, his, plant they'd be on his. They'd be on their property so that they'd be property. property. Um, I know. The guaranteed growth for a year? You know, from the, I, I'm assuming the landscape will put them in, so they usually will um, voluntarily give you a warranty on their planting. I have no idea what would be fast growing. Who can I smell that? The yeah. Cynthia. <laughs> is very fast growing. <coughs> Lilac is there, too. Yeah, it? and there are hydrangeas that grow very fast. Hydrangeas is good fast Evergreen. Growing. Evergreens, they're very I slow. Mean, you know, it's, for Cynthia it's not going to be green in the... Right. Then you're talking like rhododendron, but firs, those are expensive if you want any size to them. Yeah, roads go, they grow big. Huh? They like that um, type of area too in the woods. But that's not a, to get something of decent size, that's not cheap. Isn't his not weed though, and it choke out whenever it's planted there? That's just That's his problem. He's got to maintain the not weed. Isn't that, isn't that what we're saying? We can't spray. It's great for the not with anyone. He can. Oh, he could have a he professional. Can. He, he could. Oh, no, he, he can, can do, can do it. it. He, he can, he can yeah. himself? Yeah. On his property. Yeah. Oh, okay. But not get in the drainage ditch. <laughs> Trying to figure out what he, you know, where he wants to do. Not much like a bureaucrat, but 
of the past in Canada and Czech and not how it accomplishes the one. That's another way of doing it. So what's this proper way of approaching the real it's outside. The tell them I have an extreme liability issue. <laughs> it wouldn't be appropriate for Tom Jameson. No, Tom wouldn't. So, should Rick and I just contact him directly? We probably should. With the understanding that it's not part of the construction right. phase of the project. <laughs> We're now part of the maintenance part of it. All right, those are, I think those are the two biggest concerns is the privacy in that culvert, which is um, really needs to get some attention to it. So, Joyce, I'll stop out on the trail on phase two and take pictures of the other grates so that we have something to show that there's other grates on culverts nearby. Okay. Because that might be a good thing to just have in our back. Good idea. Mm hmm thing is with the, with the map road crossing up there, you really don't have to worry about the portion between map road and this culvert. Right. There's not a large area flowing in. So that's, that's going to all work out well. Because yeah. of the corner, you mean? I'm thinking um, east of map road. Right. If anything's going to get caught, it's going to get <coughs> caught at the culvert going under the right. road. Right. Yeah. It will come down to not this one. So. Are you going to maintain that berm between that drainage ditch and the trail? That there seems to be a berm right there. By the time they finish the stone dust, that will be a smooth, it's supposed to be crowned. So the runoff from the trail goes down. There's still four inches of stone dust. But it won't erode that side slope. Yeah, why don't why isn't the trail pitched to let the runoff go into the other bank and then eventually into the river? Well, there's under drain on the other side. There is. It oh. pit, the way the way that if I understand that right, from reading the plans and from what Jim has said, the trail is actually tilted this way, back towards the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. When it's done, that little berm you can see is just the topsoil. They got to come in and put in stone dust. But when they do, the whole thing slants slightly back towards the railroad because there's an under drain that runs that yeah. whole length. Interesting. And then you can see it back back further. You can see where the under drain comes in the, from the other side. Where they seeded along that, was that compacted at all? Was that? Yes. It was. And it didn't run last night. Okay. Well, you got a berm on the top. Four feet above the normal trail, I think. Here's a question for you. You don't think that people, when this is all done, the kayak is coming down, they're going to try and take out there? No. I kayak. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want my kayak out the rocks out through there. The, the current yeah. runs. Oh, you don't right want there. To come through that. Right. There. You want to go between the two concrete pieces that are out in the middle of the river. Okay. There's always an eddy just above this. Okay. That throws you right into the col the abutment on this shore. All right. So nobody would even be coming through that no, way. They'd not a, not it's only if they hated their kayak. Or a, you know, the or they were desperate. Thing I could see Alcohol is an involved? An aberrant tuber who doesn't control the tube too well. And they'd be <laughs> bouncing same. off of things. <laughs> well, they'd have to get past this stuff. Right. right. And then this yeah. out here. Yeah. It's, it's going to be hard to get to this culvert by accident. Yeah. yeah, it's almost having tubed that river well, it points many slightly times. slightly down river at this point. I think you can get through there. Of course, you never know when our large residents from across the river expand enough that they have to start a new location. <laughs> <laughs> There's Northfield Lodge residents that eat the trees on our park they do like riverfront. Them. Your beavers? Just keep them off of those farms. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you'll get me some pictures. I'll draft an agreement. Uh, we'll 
And then I think that then when you free again, you can find your get together with Mr. Sullivan. And what I don't have my calendar with me. But I um let me just take a peek. I don't think I have anything, I'm not sure. Next Tuesday? I won't be available. No. Neither will you. Next Tuesday? The third Tuesday. No, in the mo in the during the day or in the at evening. What are you talking about? Well, I've got to find out when Mr. Sullivan's available. Oh, okay. Well, well, tomorrow's the third, oh, this Thursday. Next, tomorrow is? Yes. yes. Oh, so I won't, I won't be available by myself because it'll be on the fourth right. Tuesday. Right. It's going to be planning board. Almost any time on Tuesday. <laughs> what is up with these right. Tuesdays? So, so but you'll be free during the day? Then? Yeah, if, if I know about it. Okay. Uh, Wake right up, now, Jane. One thing's Catherine will be free before planning board. Yeah, during the day. She has planning board Tuesday night. Um, I'll have to look at my calendar. I'll let you know when I get home. And I, I got it. I have a yet meeting and then we, next week. Yeah, we have to figure five. out. I, I gave you it. the new number to get in touch with her. I put it in your. Rick, I have a question right? to ask you. Um, one of our policemen, or actually our prosecutor, suggested to me months ago about putting location marker signs along the trail. So if somebody should get hurt, they would have some reference to say, I'm at trail marker. This is what they finally sent to me today. And I'm wondering if there'd be any objection from your association if we... Pardon? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Could work with you on that. Would, you, would there be any objection? No. I certainly don't see any. Would it make sense to try to do it as mile marker, though, from some? Well, they were. We talked about the distance, and you know, because you're walking. Um, you know, he thought maybe every eighth of a mile he was going to get on his bicycle and, and kind of thing. But right now, we're thinking every eighth of a mile. The signs are yeah. fifteen fifty a piece, yeah. <laughs> each one. So that would be T. T1, then you'd have T2, T3, yeah. for example. There are some that I just recently saw when I was up in Maine near Ellsworth. Take a picture? I think I do have pictures. <gasps> they did it a little different because it's a multi use trail. It's not just walkers and bicycles. In the winter, it has snowmobiles, and in the summer, God help them, their maintenance issue, not mine, they do have ATVs. And the ATVs tend to chew things up a bit because they go from start to fast with a spinning tire. Um, that's why most trails that are multi-use, they don't let the ATVs on it unless the ground is completely dry. But they've got markers that are on posts. Mm -hmm. and they're every about every quarter mile. Um, the only thing I know of that interferes with these is we did have some, and they were every quarter mile on phase one when we first built it, just to mark the mileage. And they were on like green highway um, delineator posts. The, the ones you put stop signs on, mm -hmm. you know, pound yeah. them into the ground. And nobody was pulling them out. But when the sewer line authority came through to cut the brush, <laughs> they took them all out. So we'd have to think about where we were putting them. The sewer line or the rail? Sewer. I well, think it wasn't the rail? The our trails on top yeah, of the Yeah, I think in this location, I, I the best thing might be put them on, on the fence. Put them on the I fence. I assumed it was the rail that was doing it. Okay, and that wouldn't the be a problem. Because so we could somehow attach them to So the rail the doesn't care that the brush is? Right to the fence post, hmm. yeah. Okay. Damn, so about, there's always going to be that fence between the railroad. And Good the point. Rail. About 10 years ago, uh, we bought So you can let it Good back point. out. Plus, now that I think about it. On Maple Court. On this side. Of River Road, we're not on top of the sewer line. The sewer line's on the other side. Why can we That's wire right. it to the fence? We could. That's what, That's what Rick was just saying. Well, and when we get down to the other part, there's still a fence between the railroad and the thing. So just that's well. Now that we have this big, you know, we have town of Tilton has this real big man dangled 
police unit, bicycle unit, we can patrol the trail. It'd be nice. We even ha we're even going to get one of those power ones, the e Polaris ones, the e-bike. It'll take them less than three minutes to go from the PD to um, McDonald's from that from there on the trail. So less than three minutes. They've been been on it. They've tested it. The longest so if time they can was crossing say, Route Three. If they can say, you know, I'm uh, the marker I just saw was, you know, T5, yeah. then that would be make it sense because then boom, they're down there. You know which way to go. And just one other thing, um, Suckman Scanlon is also on the Conservation Commission, <laughs> and you're meet. When are you guys meeting next Monday? I said 21st. Like 21st. So Catherine, yeah. we're meeting now. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> so, are there any questions you think that the Conservation Commission might have for Glenn and the project? I mean, I've been communicating with with Chuck just about every day, saying mid October, mid October, and um, and told him that we were having this meeting tonight. He felt that it really wasn't the Conservation Commission that was selecting the trail. We're concerned about being able to get the to the gun. And we don't know when their trail, we can't do our, um, our trail portion and the parking lot portion and the other planting that's done on the west side until the trailer and all their cars and equipment's out. What did Belknap say about at least trying to prepare the perennial bit? There's enough room between the trailer and the fence that they could prepare the beds. And okay. So we're all in agreement. Well, they, still want to they've got that. sumac and things they got to clean out in there. Yeah, I, I so say get in touch with Belknap as soon as possible. See if they can go in and prepare the beds. Right, but those aren't the only beds that they're going to be planted, are they? That's the only perennial bed. Mm -hmm. Is between the ones at the fence. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and restore the rest of the lawn area. Yeah, Lyman will have to do that. He'll have to restore what he's damaged. And then they'll have to come in and do the parking lot. But the only beds that Belknap has... Is along the fence. Is along the fence. The rest is naturalized, is it not? Mm -hmm. It's actually the contractor that Belknap used to put down the parking lot originally. Perfect. <laughs> they all work so together. Right after the first construction meeting, when we went out there, it's like, wait a minute, I was just here. <laughs> we did this. This, you know, the project stands right now is... Uh, Lyman's done, I think just about everything you can do to the fencing subcontractor shows up. And so that should be out fairly soon. And I can't tell you how many people called me or stopped in and told me today that the fence was open all weekend. So Yes, it was. Oh, yeah. Well, there, were, there yeah. was somebody there. There was a uh, truck there, a white pickup truck in there, and the guy had a hard hat on. Mm -hmm. Well, on the weekend. Oh, Belknap was in there? But he had, I, don't, I didn't see Belknap. Jane saw Belknap. I saw a guy with a white pickup truck with a white um, hard hat on. It was open on Thursday, because on Friday I called Quantum and told them. And um, they, their suspicion was that uh, when Lyman came to pick up his truck, he just didn't bother to close it. But it's really, the fence is there, you know, as security for the staging area. And at that point, he had nothing in there to secure. He's got that one piece of equipment, so there was nothing to secure that. Oh, well, as the trailer. Uh, except but the that amount for of the deaths town. that we've had in the town yeah. right now with construction materials. Uh, uh, except for the with the town until the boulders are surrounding the parking lot to keep cars off the naturalized area. Yep. Yeah, we, we don't want to get close. We don't want them driving in there. And Otherwise, he's going to have a lot of area to repair if somebody decides to go in there and do donuts. And we'll close it on their way home tonight. Thank you. And you'll let him know to keep it closed for that reason. Yes. Thank you. The um, marker signs, the Conservation Commission, maybe about... 10 years ago or eight years ago, purchased a whole bunch of signs for marking conservation areas at a very reasonable price. That um, I, I believe there was some type of, um, not metal, but there were another material that's completely weatherproof and it's actually like burn stamped into it. 
It's very visible. And if you talk to Chuck. Have him send it to me. These are fifteen fifty a piece. I think and they're twelve by twelve aluminum or metal. Where did Same. Parks get the ones for Buffalo? Same, Same place. Okay. They were the cheapest. That's that still would be up, a are they? perfect, perfect project for the Moose Grant money. Yes, would. Ooh. Love grants. Thank you very much. Perfect project. Okay. Thank okay, you. Thank yes, you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. We always try to do whatever we can to make this work. Somehow we figure it out. <laughs> well, yeah. well I said I would have gotten arrested if I had been there the struggles. other day when so they quantum said no. <laughs> an agreement written. Yep. You're going to write a big wording group. approved by Rick and the selectmen, and then maybe in an email from Rick before Thursday night that says yes, yep. we agree to this because he won't be available to sign anything. Then we can get him to sign it after the board does. Very you think good. that'll work? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. Good. Wonderful. Thank you. Make a second. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Sure. Next. <laughs> I'll uh, take care of that. You sure? Yeah, because you've got another meeting to get to. I do? Didn't you say you had another meeting? <laughs>